Hey, what's up everybody? This is Scott with Titans of CNC and I got more on the bone pin. As promised, we're gonna go through and program this on our Walter Helitronic Vision 400L from United Grinding. If you didn't see the video where we were actually grinding this part, go ahead and check it out. We've turned all the grinding oil off so you can actually see the wheels inside the flutes and make the cuts. And uh, you really get a good uh, idea of what's going on inside the machine without the flood of oil that's necessary when we're grinding these parts. So we're gonna go over the programming of this custom tool with our Tool Studio software. So let's get to it. The difference between the Walter Tool Studio software and what you might be used to programming in say Mastercam or you know, Fusion 360 this software is all conversational. So instead of uploading, say, some 2D geometry and then selecting where I want the tool to go and what tool to do what, I'm basically gonna say, I want to do this. And it's gonna do everything in the background. Now, it kind of limits you in how much you can do, and there are ways to manipulate around that. But it really makes this process easy and really opens up your mind so you can really focus on design and how this tool is gonna to work overall instead of figuring out how you're gonna get the tools to do what they want. So if we're gonna start a program, the first thing we wanna do is open up a new one. So I'm gonna to go to new. And since this is a conversational software, I got all sorts of different options and I'm gonna start building my tool. Since this is a custom tool, we're gonna to utilize user defined. That means I'm gonna to have to import some geometry and to help define this tool since we're not utilizing preloaded geometry. So I'm gonna to go to user defined and this is where I would select my machine. Now since this has already been programmed, I'm gonna back out of this real quick and just open up the program we've already done so that you guys can see the whole process. So you create a user defined part and you will start with a blank. The blank is my stock in this case is this quarter inch surgical steel. Now obviously it's not the same length. I'm only gonna deal with the tip of this, so I don't need to have the full length material inside of my program. What I do wanna do is create the stock for that tip. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set those parameters by selecting this little icon up here that looks kinda like a blank. And in here I've got a bunch of different options. I'm gonna go right to my blank diameter and it's set at a quarter inch. Of course, that is the diameter of my tool. Also, I'm gonna give it the blank length. Now, in this case, how we're utilizing the software, the blank length is gonna be the amount sticking out of the chuck. You know, there is a way that you can actually tell it, I want the full like eight inch part, and then you can calculate how much stick out. We find it a little bit easier to just tell it the length that's sticking out of the chuck and then you don't have to do any sort of calculations. You're gonna work with just that. So now that I got my length at a quarter inch and I got an inch and a half stick out from the front of the chuck, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my uh, chuck. We're gonna go to the machine, chuck page, and then under standard chuck type, I've got a whole list of different chucks. There's all sorts of stuff you can put on this workhead. Now, we have a user-defined chuck because course in this list we didn't have that particular size so we went ahead and made the chuck that we have with the right diameter now that we have our chuck we're gonna go ahead and go to this little home page and determine how many flutes or cutting edges that our tool is gonna have now we look at this I know it's got two cutting edges on it and so number of edges we're gonna select two this is really building up some of your conversational programming. It's gonna automatically give this tool two edges. If you need three or four, you can obviously change it to that. The next important thing is determining what wheels we're gonna use or determine our tooling to create this part. So I've pre-set up two wheel packs, one with a 1A1 wheel and an 11V9, and a second wheel pack with my threading wheel. Now I'm gonna be able to do the whole tip geometry with that 1A1 and the 11V9, but I need that separate wheel to do the threads because my 1A1 and the 11V9 wheel do not have the proper geometry to create those threads. So you're gonna pre-build those packs, get all the measurements you need, and then load them into the software. So I'll go to my wheel page, and up in the top left corner, I've got wheel station one and wheel station two. I'm gonna load those wheels in right now. 
and I have them preset. Bone pin pack one. I've got a little graphic of what my wheel's gonna look like, and I know that that's my 1A1, my 11V9, that I measured and I made sure it was good to go. That looks great. I'm gonna select that. That goes into number one, and then pack two. Looks like it's already loaded there, but I'm gonna double check. Bone pin thread, and we're good to go. So the whole idea behind this conversational programming is making sure that you have an accurate representation in the software of what you're actually using. I've got my Walter Helotronic Vision 400L here. I've got my correct chuck. Uh, I've got my, my wheel changer. Everything in here right now is exactly as it's matched or how I'm gonna machine it. So when I run a verification process, it's gonna tell me exactly what's gonna happen in the machine. I can check the geometry of the wheel, make sure it's in the correct position. I can also reposition the wheel if I need to, to get a better cut. And also there's collision detection. So I'm gonna show you guys that right here when we go through some of these tool paths. So now the machine's all set up, my wheels are good to go. Now I need to tell the machine the geometry it's gonna to use to create my tool. So there's a couple ways you can do this, but we're gonna to go to profiles and we have a user defined profile and I'll show you what that looks like. This blue line represents the 2D geometry of my finished tool tip. We're gonna utilize this geometry to create our tool paths. Likewise, we have the OD stock of our tool. We're gonna to utilize this geometry to create a few other tool paths. You can create this and it's a cam software and upload a DXF into this, which, which is what I did. So all I did was import my two profiles from a DXF and we're going to go ahead and utilize those and I'll show you where they are within the program. Now that everything's set up, my machine looks good, I can go ahead and start programming this and get accurate verification on the fly as we're going. So the first thing I'm going to use is my probe. I want to know, I have to establish where the front of my material is so that the machine can do everything else. To open up a new tool path, we'll hit this little blue button. And these are all the different operations I can utilize. Now, since I'm using the probe, I'm gonna to go to probing. And I got a ton of different options under probing, but I'm gonna to just touch off in the basic, like the Z face of the part. End of tool probing is gonna find the end of the tool, establish that offset knowing exactly how long that tool is sticking out. That's gonna be our first operation. For each tool path, we have various options for speeds and feeds and cutting direction and that's all gonna be located underneath in these little tabs. So the first one, this little clock icon, I have my RP or reposition, my approach, my lift off, and rapid retract. This peel OD is gonna kinda just peel back the circumference, the tip of our tool. It's gonna be the first operation we're gonna utilize. Now, since the wheel's gonna come down and grind it and lift off, we don't need to have, say, multiple repositions. So we're gonna utilize the default position here is no short reposition. We're gonna approach from the OD of the part. We're gonna lift off from the OD as well. And then we're gonna utilize rapid retract, which speeds up our rapids. You can see that timestamp says a minute and 17. And if I turn that off, it goes to a minute 29. Just by simply hitting rapid retract, it's gonna decrease our machine time. Now, when I go to my end face gash, it's gonna be a little bit different. Now, I got a little bit more going on with this, right? The wheel's gonna come in, you can change the angle, change the depth, all that's gonna be driven off in the left over here. You can see my uh, gash angle is at 70 degrees. Now, I can select that, and there's a little draw bar here where I can make some changes, how that's actively changing the angle of my gashing. I don't want it super shallow like that. So I'm gonna go back to this gash angle and, and revert it to its original value, which changes it. So that looks good. Next, we're gonna go to our secondary clearance. We're gonna open that up. And now you can see that my tool is starting to take the form of a drill. Now, it's also really cool about the software. Every single time that you create a new operation, it gives you a different color. So if you find that one color is too close to another, you can always go in and change it, but it's really gonna help you distinct one operation for another. 
and it really aids in your programming to speed things up a little bit and know what you want to change. So now that I've got a couple operations, I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to take a look and see how this is grinding. Again, you always want to verify what you're doing. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to press play. Now I get to see if there's any clearance issues or all that looks pretty good. On this operation, since we're cutting two edges, we need to back off multiple times so it can come in and out and cut both sides of the drill. Unlike that very first operation where it only came on one side and lifted off, now we gotta cut both edges, one and two, so the machine's gonna have to reposition to be able to get the wheel in there and cut. So now we've got our primary clearance, which is what you would perceive as kind of your cutting edge. It's really important that it angles down, that way chips can clear off the back of the tool without hitting anything. Now I wanna show you guys how we made that by going into our operation here. Now remember I said that we imported some 2D DXF geometry. You can see that we're utilizing this dark blue line here, which is the tip. That's what's driving those tool paths. So the next operation we're gonna pull up is our clearance for the pilot. You can see that just turned out green right there. We have a clearance on the front here, which we already created when we did our peel OD. Well, this is gonna ensure that there's no material gonna be rubbing back here. We're gonna clear all that out so that this edge can do its job, just like this primary clearance. We're gonna call that our pilot clearance. Now that the tip's all done, it's time to do the threading. So the threading geometry is actually gonna utilize the OD of our stock, which we imported as a DXF before we started programming. So it's gonna utilize this and run across the whole outside of the part. Now for this particular tool, remember it's going down once, then they're gonna traverse across the part and then lift off. So I don't need a rapid reposition, or I don't need to reposition the tool more than once since it's only one operation. So we've got that selected there. We also have a different approach. We wanna approach in the Y, which is up and down. In this tooth, uh, most important is our lead. We can calculate to make sure that we have the correct threads, and that's done right there. Once this is all done, we can verify the whole thing in the machine. Let's take a peek and see what it looks like from the very beginning. There's our threading, that looks good. We're also gonna turn on collision detection and I have zero collisions, so that's all good to go. Green dots mean there are no collisions. So once this part's all done, we can export it to our controller and we'll get to running it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you got some good insight on what we did to program the bone pin. Now, I hope that motivates you guys to go make some really cool stuff in your shops. This machine's super easy to use. The software is incredible. If you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them down below. We got a lot more coming for you guys, so we'll see you next time.